Okay, so we're doing day two of circles. Um, hopefully we'll be able to get through the notes just as quick so we can spend more time doing activities in class. So here we go. Um, today we're going to do um, the formulas that are involved for finding the angles in circles. Um, these are going to be angles that are formed by the radius, by chords, by tangents, and secants. They're basically five formulas that you will need to remember, but really there's only like three, but it's going to seem like five. All right, so first thing we have are central angles. Okay, central a central angle. So here, let's do this. Let me type it where you can read it. So we all know my handwriting is not fabulous. The central angle, and I guess it would help if I spelled central right. Okay, so the central angle is an angle formed by two intersecting radius such that its vertex is at the center of the circle. So we talked about that in class. So the central angle, okay, so you've got central angle AOB, and it's going to be equal to the arc AB. And this should be AB, not AOB. Um, that's a typo there that I missed. So it should just be arc AB, okay? So the measure of this angle is equal to the measure of this arc, which is 80 degrees. Okay, now we have an inscribed angle. So an inscribed ang angle is an angle with its vertex on the circle. Okay, it's important that you realize that the vertex is on the circle. This is huge. Central comes from the center. Inscribed is on the circle. Okay, and basically the measure of the angle is half of the arc. Okay, so if we go through here and work this out, we have the measure of angle ABC, so angle ABC, is half of this arc. Well, if that arc is 50, okay, not sure what happened there. So if this arc right here is 100, then this angle will be 50 because it's half of the arc. Okay, so the central angle would be equal. The inscribed angle is half. Okay, and then we have a special situation, which is an angle that's inscribed in a semicircle. It will always make a right angle. So, for example, you have this angle ABC. Okay, see how the edges touch the ends of the diameter? So that means you use the measure of this arc. Well, the measure of that arc is 180 because it's a semicircle. Okay, so... If this arc is 180 degrees, so that arc's 180, then that means this angle is half of that, which would make it a 90 degree angle. Okay. Now, what happens when you have a, just a chord that goes through and then a tangent? So B would be your point of tangency here. So this would be the point of tangency. Well, now you have this angle right here. You have angle ABC. Well, since the vertex is still on the circle, then it has the same rule as an inscribed angle. It's still going to be half the arc. So you have the measure of angle ABC is half of this arc right here. And since that arc's 120, then half of 120 is 60. So tangent and chords are the same as inscribed. It's just half the arc. <clears throat> now, sometimes you'll have two chords intersecting inside of a circle. So when they intersect inside the circle, and remember you have vertical angles here because you have those angles that are crossing. So those two angles would be equal, and these two angles here will be equal. So remember vertical angles. So what you do now is you add the two arcs. So I would take, let's see, let's get a highlighter here. So you would take this arc, and then you would add it to this arc, and then you would take half, okay? So you add the two arcs and take half. So you've got the measure of angle B, E, D, which would be this angle right here, and you would add A, C, plus you would add B, D, okay? So A, C, the measure of arc A, C is 170, plus the measure of BD is 70. So those two together are 240. So half of 240 is 120. So the measure of angle X is 120. Now, if this is 120, 
then this one over here is also 120. These two would be 60, because remember they have to be supplementary. So now you know all four angles. All right, now the last scenario are angles that are formed outside of the circle. So you may have two tangent lines that intersect outside. So you would have a circle and you would have two tangents. So you'd have this tangent and then this tangent here. So you'd have this angle, kind of looks like a party hat. Or you may have two secants. So remember, secants go through the circle. Okay, so that would be this angle here. Or maybe you have a tangent and a secant. So there's your tangent. There's your secant, so that would be this angle here. So those would be your next three scenarios, and they all use the same formula. You take the difference, so you have one arc minus another arc, and then you take half. For example, we have two tangents. So angle ABC is formed by the two tangents, so we're looking for this angle here. You're going to take the difference of these two arcs. So it's the major arc minus the minor arc. So in this case, basically, I always think of it like this. Big arc minus the little arc, take half. Okay, so um, arc AC is 260. Arc, and the other minor arc is 100. So you have 260 minus 100, which is 160. So this would be 160. So this would be 160. And half of 160 is 80. So that would be 80 degrees. Okay, the next scenario would be your two secants. So again, it's the big arc minus the little arc. So arc AE minus arc BD. And you have to do big minus little or else you'll get negative. So 80 minus 20 is 60. Half of 60 is 30. And then you have the tangent and the secant. Again, you have the larger arc minus the smaller arc. So 100 minus 30 is 70, and half of 70 is 35. Okay? So even though we said there were five formulas, there's really not. Because really all you have, you have the central angle. So the central angle equals the arc. And then you have the inscribed angle, which equals half the arc. And then you have the tangent and the chord. So the tangent and the chord, which is half the arc. So the, really, there's only two there. And then you've got what happens? <laughs> Love my circles. Then you have the two that intersect. So you would have this arc plus this arc divided by two would be this angle, or that one. Then you've got two tangents. Big arc minus the little arc divided by two. You've got two secants. Big arc minus the little arc divided by two. Or maybe you have a tangent and a secant. And again, it's the big arc minus the little arc, divided by 2. So these three all use the same formula. So there's one. These two use the same formula. Oops. These two use the same formula. So that's formula 2. And then this one, which is not a formula, they're just equal. So there's really only three things you have to remember. So I will see you guys next time. Have a great day.